going to do for us apart from uh, provide us with this ATV? The autonomous and automatic rendezvous system will uh, make it possible to integrate and assemble big structures in the future. Listen, listen closely. It's important what he's saying. In the future, exploration missions will necessitate uh, such rendezvous uh, to uh, bring back samples from Mars, for instance. Uh, you'll uh, need this uh, system. The uh, vehicle will remain on orbit so that the uh, sample collector will have uh, to meet uh, a, an automated vehicle because the first uh, sample return missions will be unmanned, most probably. Nobody will be there to make it possible to make the document successful. So this is a plus we have, and uh, it puts us in a very good position and ahead of everybody else. And you say this with great enthusiasm. You say that it's taking us into the future. So obviously we think about Jules Verne. Why was this name given to it? Well, Jules Verne was a major writer. He uh, is important for quite a number of uh, astronauts and people who uh, went into space. Now, this vehicle is, as I said, the visionary and will make it possible for Europe to uh, really participate uh, fully to future missions of uh, greater amplitude. And I do believe that uh, the name was chosen properly. We're heading towards a vital phase of the mission. I see uh, François Oak is biting his nails. The reignition of the stage for 30 seconds. The purpose of this is to circularize the orbit. So let's listen to the DDO. Allumage de l'EPS. Reignition. We have it. This brings us to the end of this uh, discussion with Jean-François, and I hand back to uh, uh, our commentator friends uh, upstairs. Over to you. Okay. Thank you for that. The, um, we've had uh, the second burn re reigniting uh, the ATV, coming back to life now, after this... Um, coasting period. That's a burn that lasted about 30 seconds, took place over Australia and New Zealand. It was in fact the first second ignition of the EPS. <laughs> this is the first time we have uh, in flight uh, such a re-ignition of this uh, upper stage. So we are now only seven minutes away from separation. We shall have uh, another ballistic phase here with the uh, orientation of the uh, launch vehicle and the ATV. Uh, to the proper orientation uh, before separation. Separation coming up uh, just in about three minutes. Until then, maybe we could take a look into the future and the other uh, ATVs coming along in the program. There are going to be about four more, which will serve uh, ESA needs until 2015, roughly one uh, new ATV every 18 to 24 months. We're told that uh, parts have been built already for the second and the third ATV, and they're waiting for assembly. As far as the missions are concerned, that is going to depend on the needs of the space station. But uh, there'll probably be a mix, we are told, of, uh, of tonight. Reboost cargo and uh, bringing up some Russian fuel, taking advantage of all the ATV flexibility and capabilities. The ATV, of course, as you've seen, flexible no, enough to be used for a big reboost, for instance, with a little cargo if necessary, or vice versa. Yes, and uh, the DDO says that everything is normal. You can see our speed now on the lower left is 7.5 almost uh, kilometers per second. Yes. We're, we're in the region of... Oh, yes, we, are, we have uh, reached the, uh, the proper velocity before separation. Separation speed coming up. The, um, one of the in innovations, I don't think it's been mentioned yet about the ATV, it's the level of self-detection for its own uh, problems. The ATV counting on itself to manage any problems alone can calculate where am I, where should I be, and how should I get there. Normal satellites really cannot do this. They have to depend on all kinds of other systems, which is why they call uh, the ATV a ship and not a satellite. Isn't that right? Uh, yes, not absolutely. A but uh, of course the satellites do not have to dock to a station and... This ATV uh, and crewed a, a vehicle for the first time will dock uh, automatically to the uh, ISS station. 
you can see where we are flying over now. We're over uh, Australia and New Zealand. The station out at Invercargill, where I think they're listening tonight. Hello to all of you out there. They should be able to pick up uh, this, uh, the burn that just happened, the 30-second burn, and the final one, so with it orbiting. Pretty close to the end of this fantastic mission. We should be able to hear the TDO calling uh, out. Which is not the end, but the start for the ATV. This it's the end of the Ariane mission, but... Uh, a big a, start for the ATV. For, AT, for ATV, all is normal on board. We're heading in the right direction at the right speed. Uh, we performed the last maneuvers of orientation. You can see the... The plumes, the thrust of the little scar thrusters, which perform these uh, maneuvers. And they're just adjusting the orientation yes. of the ATV. Small, Small thrusters thrust. for, for 20 tons, uh, 19 tons of, uh, yes. of hardware up there. 400 newtons thrusters for this uh, big, big uh, baby, which is on top of the EPS and the VEB. DDO is going to call out in uh, probably just 10 seconds, the separation. And then you'll hear the sighs of relief and the applause in the crowd, in the crowd here at uh, Jupiter with the launch Everything of the ATV. Normal on board. Launch of the ATV, a historic mission for Ariane Space and European Space. Separation ah. Yeah. Well, fantastic. That's fantastic. All right, the good news. We're going to go as soon as everyone is ready. Jean-Yves Le Gall and Jean-Jacques Dordon will be speaking. Before that, we'll have a couple of replays, one, maybe two replays. The big news here, the separation of the ATV, beginning its life now and making its way up uh, just under two weeks to the space station. Now that it's up, the uh, in-flight operations? Yes, so the ATV will deploy its four solar panels and activate uh, all its uh, onboard systems and test them during approximately five hours. Then the ATV will progressively raise its orbit from 260 kilometers up to 400 kilometers. And this period, which will last approximately 10, 13 days, it's called the phasing orbit. It's another replay. You can live those moments again of the liftoff of the ATV. So you're... You're saying that uh, the ATV make its way, making its way up on its own power. That's more or less what a normal uh, GTO uh, telecommunications uh, satellite does. Yeah, except that it lasts uh, much less than uh, several days, of course. And there is, there are two, three, or four burns for a, a telecom satellite. You know, there are burns and maneuvers, but the, uh, to raise the orbit for 40 kilometers is a 140 kilometers. Well, you can see everyone is uh, smiles. There's a cigar, Cherry Valley.